Hey everybody, happy spring! Hi. I know, hi. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. I'm this not is, Carrie. No, she's not, not today. <laughs> not today. Um, this is uh, Studio R12 Stencils and we're here every Tuesday answering your technique questions. Yes, Tuesday techniques. We've kind of stumbled upon that. We've mm -hmm. decided that we really want to show DIY and painters how to do different techniques for their backgrounds, different techniques for stenciling, different techniques for distressing, all of that kind of stuff. So if you guys have ideas that you want to see us teach you, mm -hmm. um, then let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to real quickly talk about YouTube. So last week, in case you missed it, we released our part three of our Crackle series. Yeah, and what we're doing with the different parts, guys, is we want to make it easier to consume is I think yeah. the word they use to watch the parts you want to watch. So if the first part is background and you're interested in background, good. That's short. And um, I watch YouTube videos too. And I don't like them when they're an hour long. I don't, two hours is too much time. You Even know? if you speed it up. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> then I turn into Minnie Mouse and it's ter terrible. But yeah, so we've divided it up into like very distinct little sets. So you can watch it and then you can come back and watch the other part. And if you um, hit the subscribe button, the little bell shows up on the side and you can subscribe. And then when we publish the next parts to the things you want to see, then you'll know and all yep. the things. You'll be in the know. Absolutely. If they want to watch the whole thing, they can click the playlist. Yep. Yeah. And we have a playlist set up for all of mm -hmm. this series. And there's um, four parts in it. There's the introduction to Crackle and then the three different individual pieces. Um, can, can I talk about crackle you can all right so super cool thing we just released the crackle video and then that project had a strong crackle background mm -hmm. however we have crackle stencils yeah. and this is to mimic the look and they're in different sizes and i saw those hanging there and so they're in all of, okay, I'm just not gonna even separate them, but they're in different sizes for your big projects, your little projects, all the things. You guys, kind of a game changer if you don't wanna mess with the mediums, own the stencil, crackle forever. That's, yeah, really great idea. Yeah. I'm gonna share the link to the collection for today. All of these stencils are listed in individual sizes, so I'm gonna share the collection that has each one of them listed. Yeah, and um, I just threw that at Carrie. Um, I need everybody to give her a <laughs> thumbs up and a heart, because I do that sometimes. I'll be like, hey, I saw this thing earlier. Let me talk about it. And then she'll be like, ooh, ooh, where is it? Where is it? And thank God she is so fast and so mentally nimble that, whew, yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, thank you. you. You're, you're very welcome. Ah. You're very welcome. Um, and then this weekend, we are releasing our oh. poly foam brush showdown. This is good. You guys, the thumbnail itself is worthy of subscribing and Agreed. ringing the bell so that you, on Saturday morning, when you want to chuckle, you are going to, Steve did a monstrously grand job of making a thumbnail. Agreed. It's so cute. Agreed. We. Laughter, laughter, laughter ensued. <laughs> it was good. Um, and then I will let you know, we've kind of been sneak peeking it. Um, we'll have another Crackle video for you mm. next weekend. So yeah, um, Crackle is cool. Guys. Next week, I'll finally show you. I'll yeah. show you yeah, yeah. what I'm going to Crackle. Stop next. teasing. Stop teasing. <laughs> um, I already have a couple questions. Okay, let's hear them. Sherry wants to know, is there something that you can get to use in your kitchen so you can also make a salt wash? A salt wash. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know what a salt wash is. Okay. So good question. We'll and in, what are you what are you down. using the salt wash for? Yep. I will write That's, that down. Yeah. Okay. And so what we do, guys, just so that you know, like this is almost like um, test Patty's brain is what it is. But um, so for 35 years, I've been um, painting um, professionally, and then I have gone to trade shows all over mm -hmm. the country, and then I have also taught um, internationally and then publish and doing some things like that. So I've been at this a long time, so there's a lot of things I know, but I don't know salt wash. So super cool to get one that I don't know, but we'll answer your question in Facebook, on the comments and all of that. Yeah. Um, you might wanna grab those stencils again for this. Teresa asked, does the background pattern size increase with the bigger size stencil? It does. So this one is super little tiny. I put my face behind it, right? And then when you go up to the bigger size, you can see that that definitely grew. 
So that is gonna be, and then what's neat about these is you can lay them down and you can do this section mm -hmm. and then move it over here and do that section again and then move it again. You can rotate it around. Um, I'm not a fan of that really giant one right in the middle. I would put that up in a corner so that my heavier crackles were in the corner. You could also layer it. You could, uh, you could put medium through it. You could do all the things. Um, they are, they're magic, 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 magic. Okay, let me see if I have any more before we get too into it. Um, so apparently there's a product called Salt Wash and Ooh. someone's asking for a Salt Wash tutorial. So okay. we're gonna look into Salt Wash. Yeah, we'll look. I saw a video of salt wash. Yeah, if anybody has links, I would be happy to um, explore. Um, this, every week that I'm alive, <laughs> Um, something sends me into a rabbit hole squirrel chase down some kind of Alice in Wonderland pit and I did it last week and I went on a hunt for all the mediums to do the thing and so we have some fun fun things coming but salt wash sounds like it'd be fun too yeah it's yes exciting. it does um, I think that's all I have today. Make sure you're asking your questions. Um, we do have some giveaways yeah. that we'll give away. Mm -hmm. And then um, like, sharing, and commenting on YouTube. Just comment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. so just make sure. And um, so you guys are our stencil fans, right? You're here. You want to know about stenciling. You want to know about DIY and stuff like that. Make sure that you're being part of our community and not, not like our community, but like stencil people community because like that's the fun of it. Like when you say salt wash and I don't know what that is and now somebody else is gonna put a link in and it's just like that's community and that is, oh, it's a hug, you know? So yeah. it's, it's super cool. Okay, you want ready to get started? Let's get started. Okay, let's do it. Um, should I start with this one? Let's, let's start with that one. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one. So yesterday we were doing a brush um, um, how-to okay how to use our dome stencil brushes and a lot of people on YouTube um, so that's the people that I see these in the last couple years because of reasons right um, a lot of people use their foam brushes or their other brushes and they don't necessarily offload or they don't necessarily use them appropriately I do have a video with 10 ways to apply paint through a stencil so that will be a link that um, you could go to our YouTube channel and see it there but see how gnarly these edges, this definitely bled under. I've actually even seen this done in a stencil manufacturer, stencil brands, like advertisement. Like this was okay by them. And this is, to me, bleeding under is never okay. So what we did is we showed the difference. Okay, I'm gonna show that. So this is with our dome brushes. And then this is with the um, the polyfoam. Yes, and with the polyfoam, I did not offload. We did nothing. We just, just blocked it, it on and did, and it, did and, it. And, yeah. and because that's what we're seeing in, that's in, what, in other videos. That is what the DIYers that maybe um, don't have a lot of stencil background, that, that's what they're doing. And I'm, I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying, for you that care about whether or not you're bleeding under, this is the way you do it. And so these brushes, um, are our dome brushes and they are shaped in a dome and they are where did i put the flat okay so other brushes are flat across the top and so when they i'm going to do this right down here rusty when you push on these they scoonch under the edge of your stencil okay and scoonch is a word and if you need me to spell it i will steve is mocking me on the other end okay so but these are shaped so that they don't um, scoonch under and then when you come down here and you push you i like i i have to like press it all the way down to get it to do anything but notice that it just stays on its little noggin right there and it makes a perfect swirling and a perfect stippling brush so what we have done this is like a really cool new thing it came with the five piece set comes with like two really small brushes we have made a new set of three so that when you buy the set you don't have to get the smaller ones which you're not going to use as often unless you really are doing really like cards and get yeah, tags kind of and things. things like that then the other set is still available but this is a new one so that those guys that are wanting to stencil and need to have a couple of sets of these on hand because you can't use them wet 
um, we'll be able to get this. So it's just like a service to you guys. Yeah, and Amy asked if you're able to go back and fix the bleeding under. To be perfectly honest, with the first one we did, it would probably be really hard to mm -hmm. go back through and fix it. The yeah, it's a lot. Really thick yeah. and it's really all over the place. Yeah. And I'm gonna share, I'll share with you, Amy, a link of ways to mm -hmm. Um, fix mistakes while painting and most uh, more, more than anything it's time yeah. and if you're having to go through over that whole project you're going to run out of time before that paint cures yeah and then um, the best way to um, to fix the bleeding under is to become a peeker and the peeker is where you are putting your stencil over your project and then you lift a corner to see mm -hmm. and that is called peaking and a lot of people you can raise your hand if you're a peaker a lot of people are not peakers but i think you it's almost you need to you have to and i i was adamantly not a peaker when i first started because i had such anxiety about not being able to replace the stencil yeah, put it back, back in the, the right, right place a couple good pieces of tape will fix yeah that. yeah and so i have learned that you have to peak or you're not gonna be able to fix it. Yeah, and so then if you do need to fix your errors, um, there are, is this in, what kind of playlist is the click eraser? A tools, we have a tools playlist. Okay, so there's a tools playlist. And so fixing your painted on five minute dried errors with the click eraser is in the, she'll link, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, anyway, but that's an amazing way to do that. The other way that you can do it is sand it off and start over, so if I have this board, and I was looking at that and I was like, huh. Um, what I would do is I would take my sander to it, um, just my, the sander there, we can put an affiliate link for these guys. Um, do the rough sanding first, fine sanding later, rebase coat and go again. Um, one thing, I, I woke up this morning, it's so funny you guys, like you dream in your job, right? But I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, we should do a 30 day challenge and have everybody like paint for 30 days. And then I was thinking, well, nobody has 30 surfaces. Well, some people do, but like, why not practice on cardboard just a little bit every day, just to keep your skills, yeah. you know, because that's such a neat way to, to learn not to do this. So anyway, so I challenge you, even though we're not having a challenge, I do challenge you. Okay, so today's technique on Technique Tuesday is going to be to make these um, fake plank look okay so we're doing fake planks there are three ways and there's probably even more um, but we have a video on three ways to do it I'm going to show you one way today and um, it's one of my favorite ways because anytime you need to make a line it's a really cool way I'm going to use our t-square this is the 18 inch t-square I'm going to interrupt super quick okay we just released a new playlist that okay. has all of our videos with faux planks so oh, you can cool. watch all the videos and see all the different ways we've done it but we do have the three ways on yeah there. and there's i like we were reviewing it earlier and there's a lot of ways that you can make planks well and it's funny because we we do it and then we don't do it for a long time right. and we forget it's like over two years and then we were watching it and we we're like oh that's a really good idea that's a good idea <laughs> that was we did like, a really good job wow. yeah you forget what you know until somebody reminds you that you know it okay so i'm going to take the ghost writer which is um we call it a triple threat and it has a white lead a gray lead and a roller ball with no ink for tracing your patterns. And on the back, it has a, an eraser so that you can erase things. But this um, leads, they erase with, I'm getting the right one, um, they erase with water spit, which we're not allowed to do these days, and um, varnish um, and eraser. So you can get those lines off with any kind of medium basically that you need to. So what I'm gonna do is I measured across and I'm going to divide and I've got this, maybe this guy. So the T-square makes it nice to be square with what your board is doing as long as your board is square. Um, if you have astigmatism, then um, a lot of times your lines will lean and um, I could go through a painting class when I'm teaching and I can be like painting windows with people or something and um, not like painting a window but like painting a cute little window. And I could always tell the people who had the stigmatism because like they always, their windows leaned, their trees leaned, everything leans. So um, if you can't paint a straight line, it's because probably stigmatism. So, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure it. So it's seven inches across this board. You divide it up, it's like 2.3. 
and then you make your lines. Now I've already made my lines because nobody wants to see me do this um, on camera. Okay, so I'm gonna use my T-square, line that up, make sure all both sides are flush, and then I'm gonna make a line just to have a line to go across. Okay, these are magic tools, guys. Um, you wanna have these tools because they will keep you straight. Everybody needs like, a, you know, Thelma and Louise, it's Patty and T-square, <laughs> you know? Okay, so we're gonna get lines drawn. This is just gonna be my guide. And then I am going to use both of those tools are available on studior12.com. And this might be a really good time to say, um, make sure that you go to the website. Um, we do a really good job of sending out new content, um, educational content, um, sales, and things like that. So uh, make sure that you go to the website and then there'll be a spinning wheel if you're not a member of our newsletter. And then that, when you spin it, it will kick you out a coupon and it will add you to the newsletter. And then you'll get our emails. You can ignore them or you can read them, whatever your place in the day is. You should read them. You should read them. You should, you should <laughs> definitely read them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, um, but that's a good way to get all of the latest, latest, latest. Um, we have something like 6,000 stencil titles. So we have something for everybody. So um, you're gonna wanna know what the newest things are and that's the update is in the newsletter. Okay, so I have these stencils and they are in one of these disc binder. I've never done it with the big guy before. All right, so look at how wonderfully that holds all these stencils. That's amazing. Okay, and then what's neat about it is watch this, just rips right out. And it's super easy to pop back in. So it's a great way to organize your stencils. But I've got my banding stencil right in there and so what you do is you use this little happy punch this is an affiliate link on amazon um, you just punch that on the edge of your stencil and then you can pop those into a book of stencils and what i love about that is like here's all my word stencils and i've got them color coded with different color ring binders this one's green this one's um pink and then like i've got christmas Oops in here and my Christmas is peppermint stripes so um, but you can put all of your themed stencils right together and then they stack wonderfully we've been doing this for at least a year yeah and um, I haven't torn a stencil bent a stencil trashed a stencil yet so um, really a great organization system okay so we're gonna put that away and then the way that you do this is you're gonna take Whatever line, I've actually marked the one that is the size of this because I just wanted to keep it consistent. I'm gonna put out some paint. I'm curious about what your weather's doing because we are in fabulous spring. It is amazing. I'm in love with spring in Ohio. Wow. Patty's, Patty's been out planting and doing all Three of and a half things. hours last night. <laughs> a lot um, of planting. So we were talking about, do you guys have she sheds? Who, ha who here has a she shed? I have a she shack. <laughs> the chickens have a she Taj Mahal that came with the property when we bought it. And it is so cute. It is painted bright yellow with, with um, a minty green trim. And it is adorable. And mine has five swatches of paint on it because my tools are all in there and I can't decide what color to paint it. Isn't that terrible? Like I'm the painter, I can't decide the color. <sighs> they saw it. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna put two pieces of tape on each corner. So if you wanted to, you could tape this. And that's a way that I've seen a lot of people do that over the years. But what I don't like about it is um, a lot of bleeding under tape. Um, people don't know how to handle the tape. So I'm just gonna put tape in each corner. Okay, and then I'm going to line that up. You can control the paint if you're in a brush, but the tape itself, when you start applying it, so traditional way has been, let me get two pieces. You take a painter's tape, you line it up, you line it up, and then what I've seen is then people take a brush like this 
and they don't realize that what they did with this tape is they created a stencil. Okay, so this tape is now your stencil. So if you apply it with this brush, now it's so thick and it's so heavy, and it's gonna look like this when you get done. I have fought this for 35 years with the students and stuff that I, that I teach. So um, it's really important that you think of tape as your stencil. So I'm gonna take that away. What I love about the fake board, I'm kind of switching gears here, the fake board look is it gives you the ability to make this faux different boards all cobbled together on the back. I'm, I'm just on MDF. I'm just on a simple plain board. If you had a piece of plastic, you could do these faux planks and it would just fools the eye. I love faux stuff. I think it's fun. Okay, so we got our two pieces of tape. We're gonna line that up. I'm lining the top of the stencil up with, oh, we need some multi-maskers. I'm gonna answer a question while you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Someone asked if we had the banding stencil in the larger than a six by six. So we- Such a good question. We have talked about that several times today even. Um, no, we don't because as you get bigger, you will have to add in bridging for the lines mm -hmm. and so because of that we have only kept it at a six by six because if you have the bridging it kind of takes away the whole purpose of having the bands so we just paint it a little bit and move it and patty's going to show you how to do that yeah and that, that it it seems like it makes sense um I'm trying to think if i have a i've got another banding stencil hang on a second um little trick when you want to tape something and you want it to um, stay, but you don't have an edge to, to tape on, tape through something on your stencil. So like a letter or an area. I've got a circle there, so I'm gonna tape on that. I wanna band both sides of this, and I don't wanna have to hold it down, so I'm just taping right through there, just to keep it from bleeding under. When, so I'm the, I'm the reason some of these tools get made because Making bands is such a pain in the band. Um, anyway, and so you don't want to, um, I, I don't want to own a whole bunch of single banding stencils. That would be irritating to me. You know, little pieces of skinny stuff and whatever. Um, but this has all the bands, but that means that it's going to need to be masked. And you could tape the masking or... Um, or different ways of doing that, but I like the idea of the band of the multi-master. Okay, so when you get bigger, I call this an arm trap. Okay, so when my stencils are not bridged correctly, um, I, I kind of get a little bit mad. So um, the little ones, we call them finger traps, when you can get your finger in there and it gets caught, and that means it's gonna catch things, it means it starts getting floppy. And if you look at this, uh, the tea towels are a really good mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Um, you could use your tea towel stripe if you bought that recently. Um, mm -hmm. The ticking and the tea, tea towel would double as that. You wouldn't get every size. These are actually in like eighth inch, quarter inch, on and on and on right. up the thing. Can you show what bridging is? Um, um, yeah. In like in the United States maybe? Um, well, the United States is a bad example. Um, if we have, do we have a word, uh, yeah. words one behind you? There's some words ones. Yeah, let's do this guy. Okay, so Rusty, I'm gonna grab you on the back side of this guy. Okay, so when we're over here, um, sorry, I moved it. <laughs> Go ahead, Rusty, keep up. <laughs> I'm being very mean. Okay, so these little plastic connectors, if these are not connected, then they make little flops. And if this C did not have little connectors, then it would make that finger trap, is what I call it. Um, and the tea towel stripes is every bit a trap, um, but they're perfectly lined up and awesome. So what we did is we put adhesive on the back um, that when we painted with them. So you have to buy the adhesive to put that on. But um, the bridging is what keeps things together. If we got bigger on this banding stencil, we would have to keep it together. And, um, and that means you would still be doing the same darn thing I'm about to do right now. So you might as well just have a small one that fits in your toolbox. Okay, so let's paint some planks. So what we're gonna do is we're looking for a color that is darker than our surface or lighter. 
um, if you wanted to. So what you would do is you're just gonna look for, um, like in this case, I'm a pretty dark red, I'm gonna go with a black. I could do a dark gray, something like that. If you were on a yellow, you would pick something like maybe in a brown family or something like that. So you just wanna make a dark line to infer that you had like planks. Okay, so we're gonna load on our dome brush and then offload on the paper towel. Don't want this juicy. And then I'm just going to go ahead, I'm gonna stipple in this case, and you guys have seen me um, <clears throat> swirl until the cows come home, but when you get in these skinnier lines, um, it's more easy to get inside when you're putting force straight down, and actually that might be a really good illustration. So when I'm putting force straight down, I can really get the paint in there, whereas if I'm swirling, and I'm over a chasm, it doesn't quite do the thing. So straight up and down is a really good answer for that. Now we're not gonna go all the way to the end. And I'll go back and forth. And then I just kind of leave it fuzzy right there at the end because if you do the edge, and this is the part about the bridging that we're talking about, if you go to the bridging, then you're gonna have to patch the bridging or it's not gonna look like planks. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift this up, okay? And we're gonna slide it on down. And then glue everybody together. And then continue. It actually goes really fast. You would um, be shocked at how fast it goes. These little maskers are maskers to keep um, color going into the different areas next to the stencil. Okay, and then we move it on down. And if I was doing this for a project, I would probably strategically tape these maskers um, to different parts of the stencil. I didn't think of that as I got started. Okay, so let me just stipple again. And that is how you create faux planks. Yay. Easy cheesy. Super easy. It, it seems like, it's kind of like drop shadowing. It seems mm -hmm. like it's going to be a technique that is super hard to do. One you would never do before stencils. And then you get this and you see and you're like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. So who, who here, who watching here has um, tried the faux planks? We've done the videos on it before, so mm -hmm. it's not a new technique for us to talk about, but I'm interested to hear if you guys have um, tried this before. This is super exciting to see. All right, so um, mistakes that can happen is if you get a buildup of paint on your stencil. So Rusty, we'll get in close. I, I feel like I don't need to show the continuation of, you know, two lines of the thing. So let's talk about things that can happen along the way. Um, so, can I have a sheet of paper? Sure. Thank you. So if I turn the stencil over, you're gonna be able to see that I had extra little paint blobs there. And then that is definitely goopy and wet. Okay, so um, like that, that's a problem. So as you get going, if you've got a lot of planking to do, what you might do is you go into, your brushes go into water when you're done, um, take it off onto a paper, piece of paper or something like that, wipe it down, flip it over and wipe the other side, and that'll get rid of the buildup. You don't wanna wash it because that's gonna make a wet stencil but you can go ahead and just wipe it down so you're not getting that crusty built up edge of things. So um, that's a neat way of handling that is just to take off. Don't do it on your project, whatever you do. <laughs> Don't do it on your project. No, no, no. Okay, I'm Ooh. going to do a couple of giveaways. Is that bunny? Yeah, okay. okay. I wanna see it after you're done. Okay. Um, so this kind of goes along with the questions about does the stencil get mm -hmm. bigger. Um, so I'm going to do um, Linda Moore so on Facebook says cute. she has spring fever. And so she's going to get a bunny crossing. So this is what, okay, so this has got bridging in here on this um, banding right there. You could multi-mask that band and use any band on any of your stencils. 
So you don't necessarily have to have, I like the banding stencil because I, I know I have all the sizes, but you don't have to. If you are in a pinch hit and you're like, I just want some straight banding, I don't want to mess around with the tape and waste all the tape. I mean, these things are like $8 a roll or something like that. It's a stupid number. I'm not sure if ours are, but the green tape that you get from like the um, Home Depot and stuff. Um, but you can take any of these things um, and you could make that into a masking or into a banding tool. So, but isn't that so cute, this little bunny crossing? And this is so cute, big. It is very cute. But it's really cute, little. It, it is super, I kind of love it, little. Um, I just I used to collect like the little ketchups and the little mustards when I was a teenager. I don't know why, but anything little, it's like you um, shrunk it. And then I'm also going to do a giveaway on our YouTube channel. Um, Glennis Powell says that her she shed is her studio. So Glennis, you're now going to get a stencil that says she shed. And pictures, you can pictures, pictures, yes, pictures, pictures. Yes, please take pictures of <laughs> your studio see. with your she shed. Wouldn't it be fun if everybody shared pictures of their studio? Yes, share it on our community oh, page. Oh my God, I would love that. That would be amazing. Amazing. Like, really cool. There's nothing more cool to a crafter than... Um, sharing pictures of yeah them. and we all yeah. like see we like seeing what you guys have i shared the other day the ginormous mess that we had we're still trying to we've gotten it organized we mm -hmm. have it labeled someone doesn't read the labels someone does not wait, um, wait how's that plate shot so, for me? <laughs> someone keeps asking me where things are and she's where like the oh things? if i would have read the labels it says mediums. I should go in the mediums drawer. Um, but we are still in the process of trying to decide what exactly we want on our table. So once yeah. we get it filled, then we're going to share with you guys. I think organization is one of the hardest things that um, crafters ever face. Yeah. You know, like with like and all the things, but then, you know, it goes with this, but it goes with this. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so do yeah. we have any more questions? Um, no, I think that we Everybody's are, out being spring fever. Everybody's out. Um... We did have one question, okay, Susan, and we might um, we might address this later just so that you can tell me to write help me write it to. <laughs> Susan says I want to make some signs using your garden stencils. Can mm -hmm. I use pressure treated wood and apply oil based primer, then paint with acrylic paint? Oil based take forever to dry. Okay, so Steve is like <laughs> oil based. It. Well, so actually, so oil based primer, like you can stain them for sure and then paint on top. So um, stain is, I've got these, um, Rusty, I don't know if you can catch that top row. I have painted the earth on top of early American um, Minwax wood finish, and that is a petroleum product. So, um, but I have, I have personally published and painted on top of that over and over, so you can. And it actually doesn't take that long to dry. It's really amazing, um, You maybe a day. Um, and then you can get to painting on it. Um, so yeah, you can do that. And if it's outdoor, that um, that finish will be a nice a nice finish to get into the pores of things, you yeah. know. And then you can wax it after and finish it up. A stain instead of the primer. Yeah, stain uh, the primer. Primer would take forever. Yeah, primer. So that's we're doing this debate thing for you. Um, honestly, the um, I would acrylic. Um, look at I read the label. Ah, I can read, Mom. Okay, so there's a multi-purpose sealer that is deco art, and then um, a matte varnish that is a polyurethane that can go on top. Um, these make great finishes for outdoors, so um, you don't have to use an oil base. Um, I really like both of these, so um, and I've used them thirty years. You know, so yeah. long, 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 long time. Long, 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 long. <laughs> All right. So next week we have fun things for you. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, check we're us already, out we're Tuesday. Already planning. I know. Like we are like Mad Hatters around here. We are. <laughs> Constant. We need Mad Hatter hats. <laughs> With our logo on them. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. See you, Tuesday.